Hello, this is Paul Vonderfeck with Windor Quote. This is a training video on how to set up a new product series and a product within that series. We are going to start by going to the Setup, Products, then Series page, and we will create a new series. You will select the type of series. Is it a window or door? And pretty much for all of your series, you will select Standard. Then under unit, that will be the name of the series. We will call this the 500 series for training purposes. Abbreviation, this is the abbreviation for the series name that will appear on your production labels. So we will simply put 500. Our software on the dealer side will calculate out the brick mold to brick mold dimension. Here we are toggling, do you add in the brick mold dimension for the jam, header, and sill? Because this is a window where we'll go on all four sides, we will select yes to all these. An example where you would keep this as no is for the sill, is for a sliding patio door where you're not adding any exterior trim to that area. Additional detail is our system will also calculate out the rough opening size. Here you can input what you want to add to the overall assembled window size for the rough opening dimension. We'll say half inch and half inch to the width and the height. Next, click Save and Close. And we will drag and drop it down to here. Now, to create a product, you will go into click the blue button here where it says Details. That's the far left blue button. And then, once again, click Menu, Create New. In this video, we will create a casement and a single hung window. So we will type in the name of the product. We'll say casement. We will select the image that is generated on the dealer side. So we'll select casement. And then the, once again, an abbreviation that will appear on the production label. So we'll say CAS right there. Documents. This is where you can upload any documents related to this specific window, such as cut lists, uh, DWG drawings, anything like that. It creates a digital library that anyone in your company would have access to that has permissions for these pages. So we'll upload a PDF right there. Active. This makes the product active on the dealer side. So if you have, say there's an issue in your supply chain and you can no longer get inventory for it, instead of deleting the product from the system, simply turn active to no. Alternate. This allows you to price out a window and then instantly create a second proposal without having to create a whole new quote for a similar window. So we can create an alternate relationship with the casement series dash casement. So this is where you could have like your good, better, best. Maybe you quote it out as your best. Customer says it's too expensive. So then on the dealer side with the click of a button on the group change page, you will select, all right, let's price it out in the casement 500 series instead and it'll reprice out everything, do a rule verification for min-max sizes and product configurations. Molding, can this product be molded? Yes. Does it have a direction? It's a casement, so it swings left or right, so we'll click yes. Profile height. This is the height of the profile from the bottom of the frame to the top of the glazing bead, so the, the visible frame component. We'll say 2.75 inches. So on the dealer side of the software, it will render an image based upon this dimension. So if you made it, say, one inch, it would appear to be a very narrow frame. If you made it three and a half inches, it would make the frame thicker. IG units. This is the number of IG units on this window unit. Because it's a casement, it would be one. If it were a single hung, you would say two. If it were an XOX three panel slider, you would say three. Hardware sets. This is what the system uses to calculate out uh, hardware upgrades when you go from, say, a standard white finish to a brushed nickel. So you'll click Add Section, and we'll say if unit height is greater than 1, then 1. So for a casement window, you always have the operator and awning lock. So where this would uh, come in play is for like a single hung window where you'd say if unit width 
is less than 24, then I use one lock. Then I click Add Section to create a new logic group. Unit width greater than or equal to 24, I would say 2. So that'd be an example for a single home window. And you could put in whatever rules you have. I mean, you know, maybe your cutoff is 28. You'd put in 28 right there. We will go back to here. So we're just saying one greater than one inch tall, quantity is one. So we're just saying it's always one. Let's go ahead and click save. It's a good practice to always click save throughout the process. When you click save, this menu right here appears, pricing method. So we have four pricing method options. Unit, that's where you charge a fixed price based upon a united inch range. So you're saying, all right, zero to 100 united inches, I wanna charge 300 bucks. 100 to 150 united inches, I wanna charge $400. UI, that's where you say, all right, zero to 50 UI, I wanna charge $4 per UI. Standard size, that's where you say, all right, 36 inches by 48 inches is 400 bucks. And you can create as many standard size uh, units as possible. Square feet, simply what you want to charge per square foot. We will go over these in greater detail in a few minutes. All right, line item validation. This is where you put in your min and max dimensions. So let's say our saw, the minimum that we can make is 14 inches. The max width our hard, hardware can handle is say 40 inches. Minimum height, let's say 18, max height, go 80. So right now we're saying a max width of 40 and a max height of 80. So that would be a, if you built a 40 inch by 80 inch window, that would be 120 united inches. But maybe the max overall UI that you can build is 105. So that way if you configured a 80 inch tall window, the tallest or the widest window that you could build would be 105 minus 80 which equals 25 inches. So this helps keep your sales reps in line and they're only quoting and selling windows that are manufacturable. And it, if there's an instance where you're trying to close a project and you keep violating a rule, you can go in here, change the rules, create the order, and then change them back to the original dimensions. Tempered glass rule. This is when you force an uh, IG to be uh, tempered instead of annealed. So you could say square feet is greater than or equal to 30. It forces it to be tempered. You can make it say 20. That is up to you. Or if you don't want to enforce the rule, put no. Multiplier rules. This is when you create additional pricing multipliers based upon extreme situations. You could say if height is greater than or equal to 74, then do a 25% multiplier bonus. So basically it's taking the base price times 1.25 to get the additional uh, revenue to cover things like, you know, maybe it takes you two or three employees to glaze that window or there's potential warranty issues with a window that tall. So it's just helping uh, helping you cover some of those costs. Here you can see I didn't click save when I did the multiplier rule, so those disappeared. So once again, it's always a good practice to save as frequently as possible while setting these menus up. Okay. Order form details. These are details that go produce data for your production labels and your glass order forms. The only two mathematical variables you really need to know are UW, unit width, and UH, unit height. So we'll put in the dimensions here. All these dimensions have to be in capital letters for them to work. Sash width. So this is when you're calculating out the sash size. So we'll say UW minus 1.875 UH. It's 1.875. And this, these are the finished width and heights of the frame and sash that would go on your production label. 
not not the actual cut dimensions. Double pane and triple pane IG. This is the thickness of the IG. We'll say we have a three quarter inch double pane and a one and a quarter inch triple pane. If you don't offer a triple pane, simply leave it blank. IG width one, IG height one. This is where you put in your glass formula. We'll say UW minus 4.5, UH minus 4.5. Preserve cutback. This is the cutback dimension that would appear on your glass order form if you offer preserve film on the interior and exterior. And you, as you can see, you can do a different cutback dimension for the interior and exterior. Glazing bead width, simply the glazing bead formula. Okay, we'll click save. Now we will explore the four different pricing methods, unit, UI, standard size, and square feet. So unit, you go up here on the upper left hand corner, we'll say greater than and less than. So we'll say less than or equal to 50, we'll say $300. Click create new, because we are less than or equal to 50, now we, we are going to be greater than 50, we'll say 75, and we'll say $400. And you can create as detailed of brackets as you want. You can create three brackets, <clears throat> one bracket, or 20 brackets. That is up to you. 75 to 100, we'll say $500. Click Save. So that is unit pricing. You have a UI range and then a fixed price per unit. Now for UI pricing, We'll simply edit these, we'll keep the same UI ranges, but we'll put in a price per UI. We'll say $5 per UI for that. And then we will say $5.25 per UI for this bracket. Now we're getting to a larger window. Maybe we decrease the price per UI because you know we're distributing the fixed cost of production sum over the larger window. And we'll go $4.95 per UI. We'll click Save. Now we'll check out square feet. So that's just like the UI, except now we're in square footage. We'll say unit greater than zero, less than or equal to 20. And we'll charge $15 per square foot. And then with the UI pricing and square foot pricing, there is a minimum unit price. Let's say someone buys a window that is 12 inches by 12 inches, and you're only charging $15 per square foot. So you'd only be charging $15 for that window. Obviously, you would lose money in that situation. So this is where we can overcome that and say, all right, the minimum I'm willing to accept for a list price is 250 bucks. Once again, everything that you set up right here is the list price. And then for the dealers, you will provide them their multiplier, which is typically a discount. So remember to factor that in when you're creating your pricing. And lastly would be standard sizes. So here you type in the number of standard widths and the number of standard heights. Let's say three widths, two heights. Click add, I'm gonna click save here. So here's where you put in your standard heights. Let's say for the windows, we have a 48 inch tall and a 60 inch tall. And for our widths, we have a 34, a 30, and a 36. And here's where you type in the pricing for each of those. So on the dealer side, instead of having text box that you type dimensions into, they have pull down menus where they select the width and then the height. 
let's say you don't offer a 36 by 60, leave that blank. So then on the dealer side, if they select a 36 inch wide width, the only height that would appear is the 48 inches. So this is typically used for your, your sliding patio door products or entry door products. All right, next is the NFRC label. This is where you type in the name, how, how you want the name to appear on the label. So we'll say 500 vinyl casement right there. CPD ID. These are the, the initial part of your NFRC ID. So it could be something like ENX78. And then on the another place where we set up the energy values right here is where the additional parts related to each individual glass package appear. Here you're just inputting in the product specific number. Air leakage, this is where you type in the air leakage. You could do the less than or equals to sign or just a less than sign, that's up to you. Um, so you type that right there. So this is what populates on the NFRC label that our software generates. Um, product grouping, this is utilized to simplify menus on the dealer side. So something like a single hung product, let's say you offer them with the different sash splits. So instead of cluttering our menus with three different types of single hungs. First you select single hung, and then you select sash split. So you'd select grouping, yes. And then we would select split. And let's say we're doing the 50-50 split single hung. And then we would simply copy the product. So all this data transfers over. Then we would do a 60-40 split product, then a 70-30. This way we have separate products for the glass order forms and bill of materials, but it keeps our menus clean on the dealer side. Screens. So this populates and helps calculate out the screen price on the dealer side and also populates the data on the screen order forms. So for this product, you select the supplier of the screens. Say so Flex Screen South Dakota. And then the color. Is the color of the screen based upon the exterior color of the window or interior color? Well, because it's a casement window, we will select interior color. You have the option of offering no screen and where you could do a deduction for price. We'll say no screen. We'll say minus $30. Once again, it's your list price right here. And then full screen and half screen. So it's a casement window, so we only offer a full screen. We will set that as the default and then a quantity of one. So when you would have a quantity of two would be, for example, a four panel sliding patio door or a XOX slider window. So you select the inventory ID number that was set up for your flex screen supplier here. Type in a price if you want to add in a price for it. We won't because it's built into our standard based pricing. And then you put in your formula. So just like your glass formulas and your sash formulas, we'll say UW minus 5, UH minus 5. Half screen will leave blank, so that would only be for a single slider or a single hung window or a double hung. So for a double hung, as you can see, you have the ability to offer a full screen and a half screen option. So if you wanted to offer both, you would toggle that to yes. And once again, you would set one of them as your default. Task list is related to the production scheduling module. That's a separate training video. We won't go over that right now. Egress rules. So this is to calculate out the egress size of the window, or if the window will meet egress. So if this window has the capability of being an egress product, you will set that to yes. Do you offer an egress hinge? We will set that to yes for right now because it's a casement window. And so here's how you, where you calculate out the opening size. When you crank that window all the way open, this is the dimension that the opening will be based upon this formula. So with a washable hinge, we'll say it's UW minus 11. So if you had a 31 inch wide window, you would have a 20 inch wide opening. 
31 minus 11 equals 20 inches. Height opening. So this is how you calculate out the height. So you say so UH minus 6. Hinge minimum width. So this is the range that the hinge is available in based upon the width of the window. We'll say 0 to 40 inches. We're saying it's basically available for all products. Now if you offer an egress hinge, we'll say UW minus 7. So as you can see, you can use a narrower casement window while still being able to meet egress. So the height dimension doesn't change. Let's say we only offer this hinge from 28 to 32 inches. We'll click Save. And then production labels. So this is telling the software on the production file how many labels do you want to generate. We have the frame label, sash label, and then a new label called frame and location, which kind of is a combination of a frame label and a packaging label. So we'll say we're just going to go with the frame and location label, but we want two of them per casement window. Go up here. We'll click save. And going back to the egress dimensions, so this is what's calculating the opening size. Then if you go to settings, what it's doing is it's calculating out the clear opening width, clear opening height, and the clear opening square foot. And so then it's cross-referencing with the egress code rules right here, and it has to satisfy all three of these rules in order for that window to meet egress. So that clear opening width has to be greater than 20 inches, equal to or greater than 20 inches. The height has to be equal to or greater than 24 inches. And the square foot has to be equal to or greater than 5.7 square feet. So those are the national code rules. Maybe your state has uh, separate rules. So here's where you would go in and input the rules specific to your state or country. So that's how you create a product. And like I said, there's the grouping option. And if we needed to create a grouping, I would recommend using this copy button right here. That way it copies over all the data that we set up already. And see all the formulas are inputted here. And this is where you could say, all right, let's create a group. We're gonna call this the casement group. And maybe we offer them in different frame depths. So we'll say this is our four and a half inch casement. And then we'll go back to this one. Grouping. So you have to type in the exact same grouping name in order for them to pair up. And so you can see, so on the dealer side, would say casement and then you would select your frame split we'll call this one the 3.25 inch casement and so that concludes a training video on how to create a new series and a product